this is the time for my for my presentation, and it's called Demystrify Uncertainty. After I finished a, a speech uh, type of a uh, seminar, a young lady came to me and said, Hisham, I have a very simple question for you. What is the one key emotional skill that we need to learn in order to succeed in the 21st century? I said, so much for a simple question. I looked at my crystal ball, I couldn't see nothing. But it perplexed me. I said, in my opinion, success skills and techniques are basically boundless and timeless. Wherever you do them, they are basically the same thing. But it really triggered my, my, my curiosity to see, is there really such a technique or such a skill that we need to master in order to succeed in the 21st century? What is there is one? So after debating with myself for quite about two or three months, I came up with the following conclusion. Learning how to deal effectively with uncertainty. We live in an age where things happen so fast. With our iPhones changing everything, with our Googles changing everything, everything happens so fast. The social trends that used to take 15 years to change, now they take two or three years. And we are faced with an unprecedented amount of change. Before, I guess we could say that uncertainty was the elephant in the room. We could ignore it because things were not going as fast as now. But it is in my opinion that that elephant is pretty much in our face. And it's screaming for attention. And it's singing if you can hear it. So it is in my opinion that learning how to deal effectively with uncertainty, it's not only a choice now, but it is a must. So what is uncertainty? What happens when we go through the zone of uncertainty and how can we learn, what are the techniques or tools that we can learn to actually master uncertainty? Uncertainty as defined by Webster's Dictionary is lack of sureness about something or somebody or lack of sureness about, and especially about an outcome and a result. Are you guys familiar with that? Absolutely. What happens in our brain when we have a lack of sureness? Our brain are made to protect us. Our brains are made to basically protect us from danger. Whether that danger is real or perceived, our brain is going to trigger a mechanism to protect us from danger. So what happens is that the difference is in that real or perceived. I, I'm, a former I'm a former financial advisor and I had the privilege to see this very human emotional key working out during the 2008, what is so-called the stock market uh, uh, meltdown. Some people perceived it as a danger and they freaked out. What they did, they sold most of their stocks even if it was as a loss. And some people perceived it as an opportunity and thus they actually went into the stock market when the stocks were cheap and they made a lot of money just the year after that, 2009. So it's a matter of perception, but I'm not saying here that uncertainty is just as, uh, it's a perception. It is a difficult and arduous task. We get, you get all types of emotions, your, your self-doubt and the fear, as Cora mentioned, you have the doubt and the lack of confidence and you are unable to make decisions because you're going through a zone which is unfamiliar. It's unfamiliar territory. But my opinion here is that in this day and age where things happen so fast, so quickly, change is part of us. And now we have a choice either to ignore it or to actually face the reality. In my travels around the world, and the fact that I changed countries, I could say that I have faced a bit of uncertainty from time to time. Especially when you arrive into a new country, you don't know anybody, you don't have a career, you don't have nothing. You just basically walk out of the airport and you start over. So I, from, I have developed a certain of emotional mechanism to deal with a sentinel. I have developed a list of things which I teach in my seminars, but I think there are three key elements here that if we learn and if we master, we will be able to deal with uncertainty. We will be able not only to deal with it, but to welcome it and thrive in uncertainty. The first one is let go of control. 
I take my son to a swimming class every other Saturday, and I was walking into the swimming pool the other day, and, and I saw this instructor teaching a young lady how to relax on her back on the water. And the young lady was, was a bit struggling with it. It was having a trouble, and then she was telling her, let go and just relax. The water will support you. And I thought, isn't that interesting? Most people try to control everything in their life, but the reality is that we cannot control everything in our lives, right? And we try to control the process, and we try to, ev to do everything, and that produces a lot of stress and anxiety, and breaks relationships and everything. So let go of control, and the key is to surrender to the process. We do have to do what we have to do. The work, the action, it's still there. Whether we're going into a face past, past world or not, we still have to do what we have to do. However, I do believe that we do what we do and we just surrender the process. This very conference is an example of that. I started at, on the 1st of October, wham! The first thing that happens, my mother passed away. For two months, I was pretty useless, but I, I was about to cancel it, and they say, you know what? I just have to do what I have to do and then just let go of the process. And things just started happening, and people started showing my, in my life, and Cora, and Siobhan, and everybody. And I thought, that's very interesting. A lot of people come and ask me, but how can I go in the road if I can't see the road? And I say, obviously you'll not be able to see the road, because you're making it one step at a time. You just have believed that it's going to be there for you. And it is always going to be there for you. If you put the right ingredients, and here I'm using Cora's breakfast uh, recipe. If you use the right ingredients, everything will happen for you. The second thing which I use usually as an uncertainty remedy is I change the meaning of things. We'll check some Before we see the next slide, we'll see an example. Pain, for example. A lot of people think pain its a torture. It's an, an element which we should avoid, and we do everything we, we have to do. We do drugs, and we do sleeping pills, and everything, just to avoid that pain. But if you switch your meaning from seeing pain as a torture to pain as a tool that is trying to tell you something, or that's the way you grow, I mean, Ladies, they have babies after a lot of pain, so you have a lot of joy after all that nine months of pain. And there is always something that comes out of it. So in the context of uncertainty, if we change the, be the, 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 the meaning from doubt to this is an opportunity for me to have a lot of self-reflection. Fear, this is an opportunity to be courageous. One step at a time, one baby step at a time. It always happens. I'm risk averse, how about if I see that this is a lot of possibilities? The third thing is get uncomfortable. From time to time, you can do this with this lady, for example. <laughs> One lady here says, oh, I try this every day. <laughs> get uncomfortable. Every day, try to do something different. I mean, we, sometimes we go on an autopilot type of life, right? We do the same thing in the morning, we do the same thing in the afternoon, we do the same thing in the evening, and so on and so forth. One week is gone, one month is gone, one year is gone. Before we know it, five years is gone, and you look back and you start panicking, and you have anxiety attack, and you're stressed out, and you go, you see a, a doctor or a shrink or something because you don't know what's going on. So in order to prepare yourself for this type of uncertainty, I do believe it is important to get uncomfortable. Don't travel to five countries like I did. It's too much. <laughs> but try to do something that is befitting for you. A new book, talk to somebody about a subject that you don't like, just to get to see the feeling and to see the idea that what happens and you train yourself. Because my friends, we live in a world that is marked by change, whether we like it or not, it is happening so fast. I remember I had a, a chat with a professor a couple of weeks ago and he said, you know what Hisham, I love teaching, but I find it difficult these days to teach especially first year students. And I said, oh, interesting, why is that? He said, because I know in four years the material I'm teaching them will be invalid, or 80%. And I said, that's very interesting. And that's the kind of world we live in it. Whether we like it or not, it's not an option. This is it, we have to face it. And nobody likes change, nobody likes it. In fact, Mark Twain said, the only person who likes change is a white baby.
Thank you. Thank you.